across developed and developing countries. There are several developing countries which have uh, publicly stated that they would like to support India, if at all the, the uh, choice comes up. But here the point really is in terms of, uh, and, and the point that I made earlier, the point in terms of how we see the reforms process taking shape and, 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 and the, the UN General Assembly has already mandated uh, 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 sort of uh, reforms process on, on track. It would take of course some time. But the point I think which is far more important here is how do you change the narrative, mm -hmm. the narrative in terms of the reforms process. And uh, uh, I go back to my point in terms of a wider debate on, on, on UN reforms. Of course, we can uh, focus on uh, the, uh, the Security Council in its own right and also uh, make specific uh, efforts in terms of wooing some countries trying to assess that. But we should not forget it, that would also not be very easy. Hmm. The amount of trade and investment linkages that China has developed over the years across the board with smaller countries particularly region after region at RIS we have done detailed study of uh, how small island economies have been won over by China in terms of contributing to their GDP. It would not be easy for us to, to, to just meet them and think that they would be on our side. So the amount of uh, development assistance if you see from China, it hovers around somewhere close to 15 billion dollars, which is just grant from China. And then you see the trade dimension of it, huge surplus across the region. So it would not be easy for somebody like India or even for Germany or Japan to, to uh, pool their resources to come over uh, the, the effect that China has created across the globe. Mm. So from that point of view, the narrative comes in from India's moral authority, India's authority with democracy and the, the commitment, the high uh, moral ground that we have been taking on global issues. That's what going to change and, and persuade as you very rightly said in the beginning that yes, India is somebody we would like to associate with. Mm. So that's the kind of situation we would have to create. It may take five years, it may take more. And, and uh, as uh, 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 Mr. Chari was mentioning, the economic power, the economic clout of the country is extremely important. Mm. China is, is getting into the kind of recession. IMF study and, and Asian Development Bank both have indicated in next four years what would be the growth profile of emerging economies and where they are placing India, everyone knows that. So we know that what situation we have now and what we would have after three years or maybe four years, th that would be a completely different si situation. Mm -hmm. So from that point of view, that would be India's moment. We should start working on that. We are working. Uh, India has already established what we call as Development Partnership Administration, DPA. That should be strengthened. We should have a narrative on South-South cooperation. Hmm. The Exim Bank has already been mandated to come hmm. up with lines of credit for Africa. India is going to host India-Africa Summit next month. So these are the initiatives where India would have to continue to work on. Hmm. We cannot dump our, our partners and dump the South-South cooperation related issues. They have to be brought right as, as pivot for that. And, and this is where role for Indian government would be. Okay, Mr. Chari, do you think that you know our our role in the regional groupings, in groupings like the SARC or the IPSA or the basic groups, and also our stand towards issues like terrorism, global peace, global warming, climate change, the sustainable development goals, all that is really going to strengthen our position and also you know help India. Uh, take this thing forward uh, in whichever in whatever time frame you would like to really fix obviously, it obviously obviously if you if you closely look at uh, analyze the speech that the prime minister made this time he has touched upon almost all these issues number a in this this is the only region which has a maximum number of regional forums and organizations and india has been a very leading member of that uh, organization be it sark or be it indian ocean rim association or anything so we have been the leaders of these associations in this country and these members also, the member countries, they may be small in size, they are small in economy, but nevertheless they are very important markets for all over the world. The US, the China and India all depend on these markets also. Hmm. India has the greatest advantage of being a country where production, consumption and market are all at in tandem with one another. Most importantly, we are not, we have specifically made this comment time and again that on a number of global issues, India has not really seen into the factors of who is with us and who is not with us. 
enemy country and friendly country we have never seen that as mm. far as the climate change issues were concerned and the and the and the climate change decisions were going against developing countries developing economies india did not spare a moment to think of joining hands with china we were on the same page with china as far as the emission carbon emission restrictions that were being conceived on us were concerned mm. as far as the sdgs were concerned we were one of the con most forceful countries that we argued mm. and then it was absolutely to the detriment of india's strategic interest that the us forced us not to deal with myanmar and we withdrew from myanmar allowing china to have the strategic space that we vacated it happened again in the case of iran when in us wanted us to treat iran as a pariah country and join hands with the sanctions that us imposed not un but the us imposed sanctions china went ahead and signed a huge energy deal with iran at the same time so we have been at a strategic loss in not being with these countries so what has united states given india hmm. for all the strategic support that we have given to the united states and what has china given us back for all the support that we gave to china on the climate change issue but you know uh, uh, Pr professor rajagopalan are there areas where uh, which might really act as a roadblock for india's you know power to grow i mean mm. let's also look at some other aspects of this what are the roadblocks that you notice where india has to be more proactive and has to show more more proactiveness rather uh, yeah. in the present context if one just looks around yeah uh, i mean we have a number of roadblocks one is uh, no, it's not just china but we have to sort of think about also the changing uh, structure of global power because what we have today is russia uh, because of its troubles with the west with europe is getting closer to china and we see already that their uh, relationship with pakistan is improving and it is quite possible that if that trend continues that uh, we might lose another front uh, in the in the un security council so that's you know so there there are emerging problems there that uh, that that we will let pay attention to but a larger problem is that you know uh, the sort of uh trade union garao sort of approach to uh, the un changing you know getting a lot of small countries together and third world countries together and developing countries um, isn't going to necessarily change anything within the un security council i mean the, we had to focus on a few of the key players and you know why what would make china change its mind china today is not even letting us into the nuclear suppliers group a much mm. smaller organization sure. you know, so we, we can't even get there because china is constantly uh, putting obstacles in our path so the, it, 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 we need to figure out a way to make china change its mind the only way china will change its mind is if we are able to provide sufficient problems for china or where we can mm. bargain something with china right now what are we bargaining with china and there's nothing that we're bargaining with china what what does our membership in the un security council give china i mean it, it gives them nothing really speaking so there is no reason why they should sort of support us so there has to be some we need to build up our capacities in a way that would uh, give china some where we would be able to bargain with china on something or the other and right now we don't present any problems with china and therefore they have nothing we have nothing to bargain with them for so i think i think unless we are able to become a, become a power that can create trouble for those who disagree with us or for those who are sort of you know who, for those who are um, uh, who put obstacles in our way i mean we are not going to be able to um, change other people's minds I mean, especially countries like china so i mean international politics is not about uh um, good things it's about actually bad things in the sense that you know we it is about pressure it is about leverage and we don't <coughs> have any leverage i mean you know we will have we are building up let's say some capability in terms of building up our relationship with vietnam or uh, or japan and so on in the south china sea and so on if we build up those kinds of leverages it is possible that china might uh, have something to gain uh by supporting us and But what is your reading should india uh, ever accept a kind of membership which doesn't have veto powers or should any of those countries who are really one of those uh, mm -hmm. or you know a, a group of those aspiring nations should be accepting such offers i am not particularly fascinated with the un security council membership in any case so mm -hmm. one way or the other i'm not i'm not sure what we would do in the un security council on an issue like for example isis or syria or okay. the major major yeah. issues yeah. that are there so unlike unlike other forums of the united nations 
their decisions are not binding on the member countries whereas the UN Security Council's decisions are mandatory and binding on all the members. Therefore it is all the more important that as even as a member of the permanent uh, secu permanent member of the Security Council minus the veto it, it really de denigrates our stand standard and stature and status for At a country point. of India's immense potential I don't think we should ever consider this of course it's going to be a very long drawn discussion running into probably another couple of years or even okay. more hmm. or probably even five to ten years but the issue is as Ambassador Mukherjee said we keep up the pressure we insist and we become members on our own strength and terms not on the terms of some other country which dictates terms to us Ambassador Mukherjee what do you think uh, is the way forward because you see you have to deal with these countries too at the same time and uh, he, he just spoke about China um, I'm not sure if uh, at all there is a bargain possible with China. We should all speak <laughs> about China. <laughs> we should always speak about China. Let me put this in perspective. Hmm. On the lobbying thing, uh, what the director RI said, it goes without saying. I mean, we have to lobby everywhere, with every group, every platform, and so on. Wherever there's an opportunity, uh, not SARC. I mean, SARC has Pakistan, hmm. and we work hmm. by consensus. Hmm. <laughs> but wherever hmm. there's an opportunity and a platform, certainly, we need to also remember that. We don't have to push our credentials anymore. Our credentials are accepted worldwide. Even those who may be opposed to us privately cannot say so. The fact that India is the one country, more than Germany, more than Japan, in spite of the greater wealth, as far as developing countries are concerned, India is the one country we, you know, where you have to say that if there is an expansion, it is inconceivable that India is not.